On the 22nd of March 2023, the YouTuber and streamer known as Quackity had created a Minecraft server called the QSMP. This server had consisted of multiple different creators from different regions, and it had two primary goals. The first was to unite these creators from different backgrounds, languages, and regions, and the second was to break down the language barriers. And on the 4th of April 2023, Quackity Studios announced the Global Translator, now known as the QSMP Translator, which was the real-time live translation mod used by the QSMP, the very first of its kind. This mod was revolutionary, as it would allow for the multilingual content creators of the server to directly communicate with one another in their own native languages with little to no issue in understanding one another. Additionally, the translations displayed on screen would also allow the multilingual viewers to watch the streams and understand what was being said without requiring to know the language that was spoken ahead of time. This mod had helped significantly with forging much closer bonds between the multilingual creators, but this innovation would prove to not be able to last. On the 3rd of March 2024, Quackity had announced that Quackity Studios would be discontinuing all volunteer positions following a tweet by Lezania revealing that the staff were being severely underpaid for their work. I'm going to perform a deep investigation personally on this matter as to see exactly what's happening. But one thing is very clear to me. There are going to be very drastic changes in QSMP moving forward. Everybody involved in Quackity Studios will be paid. And if at any point my own funds are not sufficient enough to pay workers or maintain the project, then the QSMP cannot continue and it will close down. That's how committed I am to this project. And on the 25th of May 2024, the QSMP project had officially shut down. You might be wondering to yourself, why would you bring up the QSMP's closure? And why specify the reasoning behind it? This video isn't about the QSMP, and you would be right, it isn't. But there was a major factor behind the QSMP's closure, money. The QSMP was not financially viable. The signs of this could already be seen by just how underpaid the employees were during their time working for the QSMP. But this wasn't everything. The translator. The average user does not know this, but real-time speech transcription and translation gets very expensive. Here, take a look at Google's pricing. The standard speech recognition model would cost about 1.6 cents per audio minute of usage, and the cloud translation API would cost about 20 US dollars every million characters after translating over 500,000 characters a month. I know, that doesn't sound like a lot. However, you also have to factor in the amount of words spoken in a day, including stutters. According to World Metrics, and I don't know if this is reliable or not, the average person speaks between 7,000 to 20,000 words per day. Let's take the in between. So, about 14,000. Now, let's get the average word size. In English, the average word size is about 5 characters. Already, this counts to about 70,000 characters spoken per day. And when you factor in that the QSMP had over 40 players, whose jobs are to livestream to over hundreds of viewers, and the fact that the prices are also dependent on the amount of languages that were to be translated for. Here, let's select five languages. English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, and Korean the five primary languages used on the QSMP. If we were to assume all of the creators were speaking constantly on the server and managed to reach that average, this would total to about 2.8 million characters. And when you factor in that it was translating for five different languages, let's take away one actually, because the spoken language isn't counted. This is about 11.2 million characters translated per day. That is now 224 US dollars per day for the QSMP, which would be about 
6720 US dollars per month. And that is just on translation. For transcription, let's take into account that most of the QSMP creators would spend about 4 to 8 hours on the server. Let's take 6 hours. And the 1.6 cents per audio minute? Assuming every single minute is spoken, which I highly doubt, but let's just put that into perspective. And running for every creator? That is 230 US dollars per day on just transcription. Which would then be equal to about 6,912 US dollars per month. Now, combine that all together, and you can see why this wasn't financially viable. And this doesn't even account for the fact that the translator runs every single time a new word has been transcribed into a sentence. This was a massive problem. And this was why the mod wasn't released publicly. I tried looking for publicly available alternatives, but I couldn't find anything that would match what the QSMP had. The community for Apier would create the ultimate closed caption system, which would include live translation, but it was off by default, because it required the streamer to provide their own Google Cloud API key. So that still meant that the live translation would be limited. It was available, but it's not free. I went searching around on the internet, and I couldn't find any other mods that would do this kind of thing. The ones that were available, they would only cover the Minecraft chat. Dream created his own live translator, and he announced it around the same time as the QSPs, but it's been over a year now, and nothing has come to fruition from it yet. And judging by the description, the mod would have still required the costly translation APIs anyway. The creators of the QSMP still kept in touch, everyone still talked to each other, but just like before the QSMP, it was limited once again. Viewers would continue watching the creators that they were able to understand, but many of them wouldn't try to branch out. Some viewers would, and they'd try to learn a new language to understand that creator. It's what the multilingual community has been doing for English creators in the first place for a while now, but it just wasn't the same without that live translator. However, I believe that things are about to change now. On July 2023, SMP Unity was created by Theo Clouds and Hero7150 TV. And on August 14th, 2024, it rebranded to Unity Multiplayer. I joined the staff team on the 23rd of April, 2024, to assist them with creating and porting fabric mods on July 29th, the would-be president of the Unity server, MXero, jokingly remarked that if he were to win presidency, that she would give me a salary. One of the admins, Lex, pointed out that this would be coming from Aero's wallet, and not Unity's. This point is important, because unlike the QSMP, none of the Unity staff are paid. Not even the owner. We were made aware of that before we joined, and we even joke about it publicly. None of us really care, because we are all working on this as a passion project. However, this does also mean that Unity does not have any funds to spare for a translation system like the QSMPs. And so I proceeded to remark, and I quote, Be glad we don't have a QSMP level live translator. That would have cost you millions by now. That was the last message I had sent before I decided to start looking into if it was possible for free. And just a few minutes later, I found my solution. Libra Translate, created by Argos Open Tech, is a free and open source translation API that anyone is capable of self-hosting. The translations were fairly accurate, and as of this video, it currently supports over 40 languages. This was it. This was the solution. Utilizing a similar solution as the ultimate closed captions, where the transcriptions would be done by my browser, I started working on the first proof of concept of the mod, saying in the dev channel, let me cook. And the next day, I dropped this bombshell in the Unity staff discord. Hello. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Yes, this is amazing. Let me cook. I had done it. 
And as you can tell from Theo's reaction, I've made him pretty happy. Over the next month, I would continue refining the mod, until finally, it was ready for the Unity server. And on the 1st of September 2024, we officially oh, unveiled coming. the Unity uh, Translate yeah. mod to the public. Okay. A year ago today, we launched Unity, as I've said. And Ooh. on day one of that server, it was good. Some of you may know. It's actually kind of crazy how many of you are still here. I wouldn't have yep. stayed. Um, <laughs> so a year ago, we launched That's Unity. Awesome. And there was a player that joined. Uh, this player was a really cool creator and someone I had a lot of positive interactions with. But the faction they were in mostly spoke English and they only spoke a few a few words of English. This was something that obviously bothered them and they ended up leaving a few days afterwards. And it bothered me as well because they weren't able to communicate with the people who were on the server. Since then, I've been constantly some sort of um, translation on YouTube. This has been something I went to so many different people to talk about. And around a month ago, I was sent this video by our um, lead developer. I'm hoping this plays. It might not. Let's see. Hello. Oh, oh my god. Oh, this is so cool. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> There's no shot. Yes. Oh my yes, gosh. this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Let me cook. Wait. Oh, what? So sick. Oh my god. This is right. so exciting. Give me a second. Oh my gosh. Give me a second to speak. Give me a second to speak. Um, that's right. Blue. And today we're going to give you all early access to run and use this mod before it is released to the public in a week. So, we're gonna play the trailer that's been worked on, and then you guys oh will all be given access to the mod. Let's go! That's crazy! Oh, that's so cool! Hola, bienvenidos a The Promontory. Soy parte de la facción Avalor. ¿De qué facción eres tú? Everbloom, Hawthorne, quizá incluso Avalor. Por cierto, ¿cómo te llamas? Soy Reza. ¿Ya conociste a los Cobolds? Te encantaría King, Antonia y Lucero. I'm now going to do, uh, type this command in. It's going to prompt you all to open up your browser. The oh mod supports 44 different languages, so wow. basically whatever languages you can speak wow. can be translated. Um, no way. And awesome. uh, with the one minor crash that affected the entire server, except for a few people. Antonia, are you still here? Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was close. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now this just works. Yeah, the Fugera. Det är roligt för jag sitter bara på min egna, alltså på svenska. <laughs> jag tittar okay, bara worry, på worry. den svenska sidan. Varför, varför skriker du? Varför gråter du? Uh, 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 um, um, wait, let me just google something really quickly. Jag älskar mina vana. <laughs> you, 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 uh -huh. forgot, you forgot to change your language. I don't, I don't need to. Sweet knows what I'm saying, right? Right, Sweet? Hon säger att hon älskar sina vänner. Åh, oh, vad gulligt! Åh, oh, vad gulligt! Åh, oh, vad gulligt! 
And after a week of continuously refining more and more of the code base, fixing whatever further problems there were with the mod, and making updating easier for myself, the mod was officially released to the public, for free and under an open source license. The mod's download links can be found in the description. The public reaction to the mod's announcement was amazing. It honestly exceeded the expectations that I was having, and both creators and viewers alike came across the tweet absolutely enamored by the new existence of a live translation mod. The magic of the QSMP's live translator was finally brought back to life, and I cannot wait to see the future of Minecraft SMPs, videos, streams, and more with this mod. But until then, my name's Nazar Blue Spring, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for being part of this journey with me. Bye.